A person who transgresses Shabbos or who violates Torah prohibitions has the status of a non-Jew, and just like a non-Jew is not able to do circumcision, the same would apply to the person who transgresses Torah prohibitions or a person who violates Shabbos publicly, he also would not be able to do circumcision. And also, if a person just violates only one prohibition from the Torah, he would have a status of a non-Jew as far as circumcision and would not be able to do circumcision. According to Shulchan Noruch, since circumcision does not need to be done for the sake of a mitzvah, therefore, if it was done by a non-Jew, it is counted. However, according to the Ashkenazi opinion, circumcision would not count, would need to do hatovas dambris, a little bit of blood would have to come out from the place where circumcision was done. What if circumcision was done by a Muslim? According to Rambam, who says that the descendants of Ktura and Avraham are obligated to have circumcision, and therefore Muslims and Ishmaelim, since they are obligated to do circumcision, they can do circumcision to others. However, Shagas Ari asks on this Rambam, says the Halacha follows the opinion of Rashi, who says that, yes, the children of Ktura were obligated to have circumcision, but that applies only to the six sons of Ktura. It does not apply to the next generations. And therefore today, none of the non-Jewish nations would be obligated to have circumcision. Even Bnei Ktura, the descendants of Ktura, would not be obligated because the obligation applied only to the six sons of Ktura. Shagasari also asks, since Sanheriv mixed all the nations together, therefore there is no nation that could be identified as the children of Ketura. They are all mixed together. They are all intermixed. And since nobody could identify themselves as the descendants of Abraham and Ketura, they would go after the majority and would be exempt from circumcision. Since they are not obligated to do circumcision, they cannot do circumcision to the Jews. However, Shagasari would say that Hatofas Dambris, to have a little bit of blood come out from the place of circumcision, is not necessary. We can also ask a question if a woman can do circumcision. The Talmud has a disagreement between Rabbi Yochanan and Rav. Rav says that we have a posuk, you should keep my covenant. Whoever keeps the covenant of Hashem, the circumcision, is able to also do circumcision on other people. Since women do not keep the covenant of circumcision, they cannot do circumcision on others. However, Rabbi Yochanan learns from a different posuk, Hamol Yimel, and since a woman is not missing the action of circumcision, she can also do circumcision on others. Therefore, Shulchan Aruch would pass him with Rabbi Yochanan that a woman is allowed to do circumcision. Ramo Ashkenazi opinion would pass him with Rav that a woman is not allowed to do circumcision. What about a man who is not circumcised? But the reason that he is not circumcised is because two of his brothers died after circumcision and therefore he never had circumcision. Is he allowed to do circumcision on somebody else? So if the reason that he is not circumcised is because he is afraid that he would die if he would have circumcision, Nikuta Sarkasov says that he is exempt and he can do circumcision on others. However, he says Taz, if he would be able to do circumcision but did not, he would not be able to do circumcision on somebody else. And also Shach says if he on purpose nullifies circumcision, he cannot do circumcision on others. Interestingly, if somebody who is not eligible to do circumcision began circumcision but did not finish it, and a person who is eligible took over and finished the circumcision, the circumcision was good.